Welcome to Electron Line. Now we're starting a new series on electricity magnetism. It's actually advanced electricity magnetism. Now we're going to go into the upper division realm of the university level. And in order to understand all the concepts we're going to talk about in this series, we need to understand some basic mathematics and some of the not so basic mathematics. So let's do a little review of that first. We will be talking about the Cartesian coordinate system, the cylindrical coordinate system, the spherical coordinate system. We're going to talk about divergence and curl and Laplacians and so forth. And we need to understand what those things are. Let's start with that. And once we have an understanding of those basic mathematics, we'll then continue with the more advanced concepts in electricity and magnetism. So here we are, we're starting with what is a unit vector? You say, well, this is not exactly advanced mathematics, but at least we need to understand what that is because we use it a lot in electricity magnetism. The question may be, are all unit vectors the same length? And the answer is surprisingly yes, regardless of the units that we use. So we can have vectors that are units of meters, like in displacement. We have them in terms of newtons, as far as weight or force is concerned. Sometimes we talk about electric fields, and yes, we need to know the unit vector in electric fields. And sometimes we talk about acceleration, meters per second squared. And regardless of what units we use, the unit vector is always the same length. But that doesn't exactly explain what unit vectors are, so let's try to illustrate it. Mathematically, if we let this be the symbol for the unit vector, it is equal to the vector divided by its magnitude. In this case, if the vector is a displacement of 5 meters in the x direction, then if we take that vector, so we can write 5 meters multiplied times the x direction, actually that is a unit vector, we'll get at that in just a moment, and if we then divide this by the magnitude of that vector, which is 5 meters, notice the 5 meters cancel out, and that simply gives us x with a little circumflex on it like that, which is the symbol for unit vector. This is one unit long, and here we have the unit vector represented. The unit vector is in the same direction as the original vector, and the length of that vector is unit 1. Hmm, what does that really mean, and why do we need it? Well, whenever we multiply anything times a unit vector, it doesn't change the magnitude of the item that we're multiplying. If we, for example, multiply the vector b by the unit vector, we will still get the magnitude of vector b, and we'll have the direction of the unit vector. Let's talk about an object here. Let's say the mass of the object is 4 kilograms. We have the force of gravity acting on the object. Therefore, the object has weight. The weight is equal to m times g. g is the acceleration due to gravity. Multiply the 4 kilograms times 9.8 meters per second squared. We have 39.2 newtons. It's acting in a downward direction in the direction of y, but in the negative direction of y. So this is now the weight vector. If we want to know the unit vector in the same direction, well, it will be a small vector like this. Same direction as the original weight vector. And here's the symbol for the unit vector. We take the vector divided by its magnitude. That is equal to minus 39.2 newtons in the y direction, divided by the magnitude. Now, the magnitude is always a positive quantity, so that will be 39.2 newtons. That cancels out, and so the unit vector in this case is minus in the y direction. It's a negative one unit. Still, the magnitude is one. It's pointing in the negative direction. That's what this negative is, and it's in the negative y direction. The unit is still 1. The magnitude of the vector is still 1. Here, let's say we have a, an object that has charge on its surface. We want to know what the electric field is at this location, some distance away from the center. So let's say that this is the center of the object. So this is the distance r away in spherical coordinates from the center of the object. Notice here that the electric field strength at this point would be equal to 10 newtons per coulomb in the outward radial direction. What is the unit vector starting at this point? So it would be in the same direction. The unit there, the length of that would be equal to 1. We can find that by taking the electric field, which is 10 newtons per coulomb, in the radial direction outward, the r direction, and we divide that by its magnitude, which is 10 newtons per coulomb. That cancels out, and we still have the unit vector r. So what that means here is that the unit vector we were looking for, a vector in the same direction as the electric field, but only one unit long, we find that is equal to the unit vector r. Again, radially outward in this direction, and the magnitude of that is equal to 1. But the old mechanics, when we talk about a car accelerating at 3 meters per second squared, 
Notice that this here is the magnitude of the vector. So the magnitude of the vector is 3 meters per second square. So this here would be considered the magnitude of the vector. And this here would be considered the unit vector. So the symbols that we use, x, y, z with the circumflex over it, or sometimes we use i, j, and k, those are all called unit vectors. So this, in essence, is the unit vector of this expression. And now you can see that any vector is, in essence, a unit vector, which is the directional of the vector times its magnitude. So here you can say that when you have a vector like the acceleration, this is considered the magnitude of the vector, and this is considered the unit vector, which simply gives you the direction of the vector in the first place. So unit vectors are usually vectors of unit 1 that simply tell you the direction of the vector that we're dealing with, be it the electric field, be it the displacement, be it the weight, be it the acceleration, doesn't matter. The unit vector always gives you the direction of the vector, and it only has unit 1 in length, regardless of what the units are that we're using. Now, it turns out a unit vector can have a negative quantity if it's pointing in a negative direction. The magnitude is still 1, but it can be negative, so don't forget that that's also part of a unit vector. Now we understand unit vectors, let's move on to the next concept on the next video.